funds. This is Gina Taylor with the Rock Island County Health Department. It's 3.30 on September 15th. Welcome to our daily briefing. Uh, today we have with us Nita Ludwig of the Rock Island County Health Department and Ed Rivers of the Scott County Health Department. As always, please put your questions in the chat box and Brooke Barnes of the Scott County Health Department will be the moderator. Nita, let's start off with Rock Island County's numbers, please. Sure, good afternoon. Today we have 10 new cases of COVID-19, which brings our total to date to 2,715 cases of COVID-19. Our deaths remain at 74 for Rock Island County, and there are currently 14 people hospitalized with COVID-19 in Rock Island County. Back in March and April, we investigated many cases of COVID-19 connected to the Tyson Meatpacking Plant in Joslin. In those early days, many of the cases in our county were either Tyson workers or close contacts of Tyson workers. This was not a surprising trend because many meatpacking plants across the nation had hot spots early in the pandemic. Since those early days, we have been in almost daily contact with the leaders at the Joslin plant. In April, Rock Island County health officials and our infectious disease physician, who is one of our volunteer medical reserve corps uh, volunteers, visited the plant and met with the plant manager, Barbara Salter. We saw that Tyson had instituted aggressive and innovative infection control efforts at the plant. By the end of May, we hardly saw any new cases, and throughout the summer, the case count grew by only a handful. As of today, 166 Tyson employees have tested positive that live in Rock Island County. Tyson's quick action drastically slowed and practically halted the spread of COVID-19 in that facility. Tyson employees, which are 2,700 at the plant, and they speak 27 different languages out in Joslin. They implemented a host of protective measures that have made the case count at Tyson flatten for months, including prior to entering the plant, every team member is provided a face mask and screen for symptoms. Masks are required to be worn at all times in the facility. Team members walk through a scanner that takes their temperature before going into the plant. The facility adjusted shift times so that employees don't cross and implemented a one way in and one way out of the traffic pattern of the plant. They installed barriers at all workstations, offices, desk tables, and in the cafeteria. In addition to masks, all team members wear face shields and on their hard hats at all times. Team members have been assigned as social distance monitors throughout the facility. Team members continually sanitize the cafeteria, office, hallways, locker rooms, handrails, lockers, all of those uh, frequently touch surfaces throughout the day. They installed no-touch drinking stations, hand sanitizers, and soap dispensers, and paper towels. Designated workers have been trained to be health interpreters to educate workers in their own language. Testing is available on site to anyone who is symptomatic or close contact of a suspected or confirmed case. And, and soon they will have weekly test sampling to stay ahead of any future outbreaks. The health department supplied Tyson with signs in multiple languages to help get across the importance of wearing masks, social distancing, and hand washing. We also started an advertising campaign on Rock Island County buses and that share these messages in five languages, English, Spanish, French, Swahili and Hakachin. We have 2,715 cases in Rock Island County, and only 166 of them are Tyson employees. We have 74 deaths currently in Rock Island County, but only two of them were Tyson employees. Early in the pandemic, we feared that the Tyson plant might become one of the COVID-19 hotspots in the nation, like the meat packing plants that have become uh, that had outbreaks in South Dakota and Iowa, and that thousands of people might get sick, but that hasn't happened. Tyson and an outbreak in the East Lowing Correctional Center account for about 30% of the cases in Rock Island County. But that means 70% of the 
are people who have gotten sick because they were exposed somewhere else in our community. Keeping yourself as safe as possible is in your own hands. Please wear your mask when you leave home. Keep six foot of distance between yourself and others. And of course, wear your face covering and wash your hands frequently. Clean frequently touch surfaces and tightening success shows us that those three efforts can significantly slow the rate of the infection in our community. And just as a final reminder, the Illinois Department of Public Health testing site for COVID-19 is returning to Rock Island County September 17th through September 20th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Quad City Expo Center in Rock Island. Thank you. In Scott County today, the number of cases stands at 2,541. And the Iowa Department of Public Health has reported another death of a Scott County resident from COVID-19. We send our, our deepest sympathies to the family of this individual. This brings the number of deaths to 26. As a community, we must use all the tools at our disposal to slow the spread of this virus. And with six months experience in COVID-19 contact tracing and providing guidance to individuals who are positive or who are contacts to a positive case, we found that portions of the guidance could use some emphasis and clarification. Public health recommends that individuals who are positive for COVID-19 self-isolate for a period of at least 10 days. Self-isolation means separating someone who has COVID-19, whether they have symptoms or not, to prevent the virus from being spread to others. This means staying away from others inside your home, not sharing meals or being in shared living spaces. If you don't stay away, you're continuing to expose the people in your household over and over. More exposure means more chances to make them sick. We're asking individuals to self-isolate 100% of that 10-day period not just for the majority of any day. Self-isolation is very important, especially in protecting those with whom you live. The virus spreads extremely easy among household members. The likelihood of contracting COVID-19 is nearly 10 times higher if you live in the same household as a positive case. Public health recommends that individuals who are close contacts of a positive case of COVID-19 quarantine for a period of 14 days to prevent spreading the virus. And you can transmit the virus before you feel symptoms should you develop the illness. This means staying away from others inside your home, not sharing meals or being in shared living spaces for the entirety of the 14 day period and not attending any group gatherings or activities. When individuals who are positive or who are close contacts don't heed public health guidance, and stay at home during their self-isolation or quarantine periods, other people catch the virus. It could be spread to someone with an underlying health condition, a healthcare worker who is working on the front lines, or to a whole football team. Isolation and quarantine are difficult and frustrating. The best chance to avoid them is by being cautious. Don't go to places or events where you can't maintain six feet between yourself and others. Wear a mask whenever you're out. Wash your hands often and avoid touching your face, especially your mouth and eyes. Also, if you begin to feel any sort of symptoms, a runny nose, cough, sore throat, stay home. Thank you, Ed and Nita, for sharing that information with us today. Um, for those partners on the call, please feel free to type any questions into the chat and we will get them answered as they come in. Um, the first question we have is for Nita and for Rock Island County. The timing of the Tyson info is odd. A national story just broke about how executives work behind the scenes to keep facilities, not just Tyson opened. Did this information come from Tyson? I in no way want to detract from what was accomplished. And I know Nita, we've talked about having this information on for a while now. So do you want to give a little background on that? Sure, we do know that our Tyson plant and Jaslyn had done a really good job with all their mitigation efforts. 
and we wanted to have them on to speak as one of our guest speakers uh, for, I would say, three or four weeks at least. And we were unable to get them to be able to participate in a media briefing, but they did share with us the different types of mitigation efforts that they had done, and they asked us to just share on their behalf. But again, Tyson has done a very good job with their mitigation efforts, and I do believe the Joslin plant has been used as a model for their other Tyson plants throughout the country. Okay, we'll wait another second and see if there's any additional questions. Oh, we have a partial there. Um, what are your thoughts about trends in cases, um, cases and deaths lately? Do you want to speak to that at least for Rock Island County, Anita, and then we can have Ed speak to Scott County? Sure. Well, I think just as Ed was kind of explaining in his talking points, we are seeing a lot of household spread, community spread, and that's certainly the vast majority of our cases. Um, you know, we're seeing younger people get this virus too. So I think the important messages are not to let your guard down and still be vigilant with hand washing, keeping that social distance, and wearing your face covering. Uh, would you like to provide anything for Scott County? Thoughts on cases? Yes, uh, our cases have been up and down over the six months that uh, we've seen this uh, pandemic in our county. Uh, back in July, in the middle of July, we were seeing uh, about 31 cases a day of people reporting symptoms, not the Iowa Department of Public Health number of when they reported the positive case, but when they actually became sick. And then it went down to about two cases a day uh, in early June. We did have another peak uh, in the middle of August. Uh, it was up from the week of 825 to 831. It was about 28 cases a day. Uh, but since the 1st of September, it's down to about 18 cases a day. So uh, our numbers appear to be moving down, hopefully, and uh, if people will heed our advice and do the things that we're asking them to do, maybe we can keep it that way. Nita, another question. Are you getting many complaints about non-compliance from restaurants or bars or other businesses? I wouldn't say many. We get a complaint here or there about an establishment, and we do send out some of our environmental health staff to just go and have a chat with the business or the owner or the manager and just really explain to them and educate them on what the governor's mask mandate is in Illinois and, and how they need to be compliant. Um, there are additional steps that can be taken if we need to, but at this point we have not had to do any of those others. Okay, and so there's questions on any fines and you just answered that with saying we haven't had to do any of those yet, so. Okay, well, no additional questions. We'll go ahead and conclude our briefing for today. Thank you again, Ed and Nita, for sharing the information and for our media partners being on the call and sharing this with the public. We appreciate your support. We'll post a recording of this onto the Scott County Health Department's website as well as on Facebook, so you should be able to find it there should you need any additional information. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk again soon.